What's going on everybody? My name is Luke the Notable. In this video, I'm going to try to convince you that all shooter players, at least on console, should be playing Claw. If you know what Claw is, if you don't know what Claw is, if you're skeptical about my claim, or if you already play Claw, I think this video will be interesting for all of you, and I hope that you stick around. So if you have no idea what Claw is, Claw is a way of holding the controller where you take your index finger and lay it across the buttons of any controller really, uh, Xbox One or PS4, it doesn't discriminate, you can claw with both. And this allows you to keep your fingers, your thumbs, on both joysticks, allowing you to move and shoot in first person shooters, and even some third person shooters, while also being able to hit all of the other buttons. And those buttons oftentimes are associated with things like jump, or a thrust, or switching your weapons, or even just melee. Claw has been around for a very long time. It's a very efficient way of holding a controller, and a lot of people have been doing it for years, but there are still a lot of people that don't want to claw for many reasons. And I'm going to kind of address those in this video, give my reasons for, you know, switching over to claw, and uh, just kind of try to convince you in general. Now understand that most of the reason that you would ever want to claw is because you want to get better at a fast-paced game like a first-person shooter. Uh, maybe even a third person shooter, but mostly first person shooters. You need to be very quick on your thumbs, quick on your sticks. You may need to jump while in midst of a gunfight, and uh, Claw will allow you to do that. There are alternatives to playing Claw, things like the Elite Controller, Scuffs, uh, Cinch is another company, and there are a ton of other like small companies that make controllers that have paddles or buttons on the back that allow you to keep your hands in a neutral position, like a normal uh, controller is held, and allow you to touch buttons on the back, allowing you to be more efficient. But for a lot of reasons, these aren't a good investment. If you've been a fan from my channel for the last couple of months, you'll know that in July of 2016, I did buy myself an Elite controller because I wanted to see. I had always played on a normal controller. Uh, at a time, I used the Collective Mind Strike Pack, which is a $50 add-on that you can stick on any controller. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I did end up buying the Elite controller. It was a great purchase. Great, fantastic purchase that allowed me to up my game um, objectively. I got an objective advantage because I could hit more buttons easier and more efficiently. However, after about six months, this controller kind of started to give me some problems. My shots didn't feel as crisp. It felt like I'd go for that last headshot when playing Halo and I'd miss that headshot and I'd think, ow, oh, how did I miss? And I was watching my gameplay and trying to analyze what I was doing wrong and it came down to the fact that controllers aren't good forever. Any Xbox controller that you have, and I have like nine of them, just because, you know, they're kind of collectible. Look, it's the lock controller. Both of the thumbsticks in an Xbox One controller, whether it be standard, elite, scuff, cinch, whatever, they're all made by the same company, have little tiny springs in the jumps and the jump sticks. Ugh. Xbox One controllers, and I believe PS4 controllers as well, have little tiny springs in the joysticks that allow the joysticks to stay in a neutral position whenever they are moved or touched, so they always spring back to the center. And if you're, you're really close, you can kind of hear that spring moving around in there if you, you know, take your controller and put it right up next to your ear. And after about six months to a year, depending on things like how often you play, you know, how much wear your controller has, this spring will start to become a little bit worn out and you're going to see some objective losses to things like accuracy in shooters. And I know that there will be a couple of you that want to go down into the comment section and tell me that I'm wrong and that you've had your controller for four years and that you don't notice any problem in aiming or shooting or anything like that because you take impeccably good care of your controller. And I understand that you probably take great care of your controller, but to a certain extent, there is nothing you can do about the spring going bad. If you play you know, probably more than an hour a day or even five to ten hours a week, eventually that spring's gonna go bad and you're gonna see negative effects in your gameplay. The only reason you think it hasn't gone bad is because it's a very slow process. If you got a brand new day one out of the box fresh controller and you played a game of say Halo 5, you would notice immediately the difference. Because I did. I had my Elite for probably seven months, played on it very heavily, took great care of it. I did not want this thing to wear in any way. Took amazing care of this controller. Like never dropped it, ever. Always kept it in the case when I traveled with it. And after about seven months, I got a new, just, uh, you know, standard Xbox One controller, $40 on Amazon. Got that uh, in the mail in February of 2017. The first game I played of Halo 5 with it, I could 
instantly know the difference. And that's why I think you guys should ditch your elites, ditch your scuffs, and just move over to a basic, standard Xbox One controller. This thing cost me $40 on Amazon, and if it goes bad in the next couple of months, I can sell this thing to GameStop for maybe 10, 20 bucks, buy another one on Amazon for $40, and I'll be right back at the top apex of my gameplay with good shots and everything. But if I had to replace an elite, that's another 100 to $150 out of my pocket. Some of the scuffs cost even more. So from a cost perspective, if you want to have the best, most consistent, and play the games that you want you know, to play at the way they want it to be played, it, it, you know, with increased accuracy, ditch your elite controllers, ditch your scuffs, because they are going to go bad on you, and the paddles aren't going to save you in a shooter game if you can't aim. They didn't save me, and I'm pretty good at Halo, and they're not going to save you. Go to Amazon.com. That's where I got this one. I bought it for $40 with Prime. It came to my door two days later, and from the first game that I played on it, I noticed immediately that something was different and that this one was way better, and I think you will too. I've already done a review on this channel about a year ago of the Collective Mind Strike Pack uh, for Xbox One controllers. Now this thing is a small little piece of equipment that you put in the back of your controller where the battery pack goes. You will have to uh, make the controller a wireless controller at that point, but it does come with an extra long cable and it gives you essentially two programmable on-the-fly paddles that you can use. So if you don't want to, you know, uh, waste all that money on a lead controller but you still want to use paddles, this is a good way to go. Um, and then you, when your controller does go bad, you could always just uh, switch out the, the controller underneath the paddles. So you could always have a, a very high quality aiming experience. I have reviewed the product. I would recommend it for anyone that doesn't want to go for claw. But if you don't have the money, then you don't have the money. Okay, now it's time to teach you guys how to play claw. Now, when you're going to play claw, understand that it's going to kind of suck when you start. Your hands might get a little sore. You're definitely not going to play as well and it can be sort of a long process. If you ever have changed a button layout in a popular game that you've played, know that it's pretty much the same effect as changing a button layout. You're not, you don't have the muscle memory uh, when you're just switching to claw. You don't have that muscle memory set up in place, so you're going to hit the wrong buttons. You're not gonna feel right, so you're gonna miss a lot more shots, even though your fingers are on the exact same sticks. You're gonna miss more shots. It's gonna be an overall pretty crappy experience until you kind of get used to claw. So for that, you wanna keep that in mind. Keep it in mind, know that you're probably not going to play as well for a while, but know that there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I've been switching to claw for about a month now, and uh, I was waiting to do this video until I was 100% sure that I was completely switched over and that claw felt just as natural to me as this feels to a lot of you guys. The way I tackled claw was tackling it in steps. I didn't just straight up go and start holding the controller like this one day. I kind of paced myself. I, I took a longer time in getting used to claw by adding one thing at a time, taking away one thing at a time, and it was overall a better experience for me for doing that. Your first step is that with your right hand, you want to move your middle finger to the trigger because this is where your middle finger will be when you end up uh, fully switching over to claw. And you want to move your index finger to the right bumper just above the trigger. This will uh, kind of transition you into moving that index finger all the way over to the buttons. And it will also get you used to using the uh, index, your middle finger, I should say, as the trigger finger, as you will be surprised that this is a little bit difficult to master. Once that feels comfortable, you can kind of curl your index finger, your pointer finger, uh, over a bit so it's not necessarily touching the right bumper. And I kind of rested it on the X and the Y buttons. And I was only pressing X and Y with my index finger and taking my thumb off of the, the right stick to press A and B. I found that when I was just straight up trying to switch to claw and stretch my finger over to B and A, which are way down on the controller, it was really hurting me. So I decided to use my thumb a little bit and give myself a little help. This will help you to kind of get used to the positioning that you have to put your hand in whenever you're going to be using claw. And again, aiming is always going to be weird whenever you change the way you hold your controller. So kind of uh, taking a little bit of time on this is, is going to be important here. And then after a while, once your hands, the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles kind of stretch out a little bit, 
uh, you'll find it, it's much easier for you to press all of the buttons with your uh, index finger uh, on the front of your controller as well as you'll find that you'll get more shots, uh, you'll, you'll feel that your shot is more consistent and pulling the trigger feels a lot more natural. You have to understand that you're using a completely new set of muscles, ligaments, tendons, everything when you're holding your controller in the claw fashion versus just the regular controller fashion. So you need to get your body adapted to that. You never, ever want to play after your hands are sore and I cannot stretch this enough. I know that there will be a lot of people down in the comments that say that they try claw but end up quitting because it ends up hurting them. And know that this hurt is normal. It happened to me as well. But what you have to do is when it starts to hurt, stop. You'll notice a soreness in your hands and that's because you're working out your hand muscles to get them used to that different feel and strengthening all of the muscles that control your hand, which are actually in your forearm for the most part. You'll notice that more and more your hands will kind of develop a tolerance for playing with claw. For me, it was when I started, because I have pretty strong hands, uh, I could play for about an hour before my hands got kind of tired and sore. And every single time that I would play, after that hour, I'd put down my controller and just go and take a rest for a little bit until my hands felt normal again, and then I'd go back. As long as you do the things that you need to do and you don't intentionally hurt yourself by playing too long and playing with a hand that is sore, you're not going to develop arthritis. Your hands are sore because they're not strong enough, but like anything, you need to hurt them a little bit to get them strong. Just don't go after your hands are already sore. I cannot stress this enough. Also, one helpful thing is make sure not to change your button layout. For Halo 5, I play the Hell Jumper layout. And a lot of people said, well, Fish Stick, which is another Halo 5 layout, is a better option for Claw. And originally, I tried moving over to Fish Stick, but moving to Claw plus moving to Fish Stick was just too much for me. That might be a more efficient way of doing it. But for me, the whole process was a lot easier staying on the same button layout that I was always on. I have plans further down the road to change to fish stick eventually, but for now I'm playing just as I was before, playing with just Hell Jumper. Don't change your layout until you're totally cool and, and, and set in, you know, claw. As far as game types to play, I, for Halo 5, really just played whatever. I'd play Warzone, I'd play some competitive, it didn't matter to me what I played. But if you don't want to hurt your record, you could play the single player mode. You could play other games, uh, whatever you're doing. Just make sure that you practice with claw. But what it comes down to at the end of the day is following a progression and practice. If you don't practice with claw and if you're kind of bad in, in switching between claw and holding it like a, you know, a, a regular grip, you're definitely not going to make progress in moving towards being able to feel comfortable with claw. The reason this video took so long for me is I was switching back and forth between normal grip and claw. Uh, I started to switch to claw around mid-February, and then Halo Wars 2 came out, and I couldn't do Halo Wars 2 in a claw grip. I just, I was not hitting the right buttons. It was not working for me. So I reverted back to holding a controller normally, and of course I reverted my ability to play claw. So you want to make sure to keep practicing and stay persistent with it. That's probably the biggest thing outside of uh, don't play after your hands ache. Seriously, I don't want anyone to get like arthritis. I would feel so bad and I just can't stress enough that you, if your hands hurt, stop. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much all the tips that I have for switching to claw. If you have anything else, though, most of the tips in this video, a lot of them came from you guys. Go down to the comment section below and post those down there. Uh, I'll, I'll try to pin any that I think are really cool and interesting. But I think if you just follow these basic tips, it should be pretty easy for you to, you know, get yourself into that claw mentality. It does feel pretty good knowing that I can pick up any controller, no matter what controller it is, and play at my best. That if uh, I go over to a friend's house and uh, he has an Elite and I just have a regular controller, I'm going to play on the same level as him. Or if I normally, you know, say I normally use an Elite, and then for some reason I can't use an Elite, I'm going to play at the same level. I want to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe. I do make a ton of Halo tips content that will help you to get better. I think this is one of the most important videos that I've ever done. It's really going to help you to get better, especially uh, not just at Halo, in any shooter that you end up playing. And I'm kind of marketing this video to a bunch of different shooters as well. Not enough people use Claw. I did a Twitter poll, and it about only about 20 people, uh, at least on the Twitter poll, said that they did use Claw. So there's definitely needs to be a, you know in increase in uh, the amount of people using it. I would like all of you to stay notable, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.